ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلق من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters these verses uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, which i just mentioned to you have been repeated by him alayhi salatu wasalam in every friday khutbah in every important sermon or lecture or lesson that he gave to his companions these verses contain great lessons for us to benefit from and it was for that reason that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would mention them on a regular basis continuously one of the lessons that you can find in these ayat is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us the story of creation and how we as human beings came to be in that Allah azza wa jal he created Adam and from Adam he created his mate Hawa or Eve and then from the two of them he brought forth countless men and women their offspring it was adam and hawa alayhi salam that populated the earth before that as you know the story of adam and eve or adam and hawa that they were both in a paradise or a garden and they were removed from that garden and placed here on the earth to dwell due to their disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're giving in to their own desires the interesting thing when you look at the history of human beings is that it all began from these two people and this is the story that i want to share with you a story related to the offspring of adam alayhi salam so as you could imagine which of course is totally against what science says about the way in which the human beings were brought about and populated the earth but our belief is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created these two beings they were not like us they were human beings but they were different in their in their existence and that in order for them to populate the earth as they were just two they would have their own children and then their children would have to marry and have children of their own in order for this cycle to continue and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala charged Adam alayhi salam and his wife with the responsibility of populating the earth he allowed at that time that their children marry one another that their sons and daughters marry one another so historically you find that whenever Adam and Hawa they had a child every time Hawa delivered she delivered twins a boy and a girl every time she gave birth there was a boy and there was a girl and the first of these children the first son his name was qabil who was known as cain in the other religious traditions and qabil he had a twin sister and then after that he had another son by the name of habil and of course he had a twin sister and like that adam and eve had children a boy and a girl every time so these two qabil and habil or cain and abel they grew up 
with their parents. And Qabil, he became a farmer, tending to the, the crops and the vegetation and the fruits, the grains and the wheat and so on and so forth. And his brother, who was younger, Habil, he became a shepherd, tending to the flock of his family of sheep and lamb and goats and, and, and different types of animals. So you can imagine their upbringing was very simple and easygoing. But there comes a point in every man's life and woman's life when it's time to look for a spouse, a life partner. And so this happened to both the brothers, Qabil and Habil. And Adam alayhi salatu was salam was instructed to marry one to the sister of the other. So that Qabil would marry his brother's sister and that Habil would marry the sister of his brother Qabil, so that they would switch the twins, so that there would be a little distance from one another. The problem in this situation was that Qabil's sister, she was the more beautiful of the two. So as we are human beings, just as they were, there were some desires that they were both looking at the more beautiful of the two to be their wife. And turns out that Habil, he asked for Qabil's sister's hand in marriage. He went to his father and asked to marry the sister of his brother Qabil, which was the plan. It was the intent of his father Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So upon hearing this Qabil, now his twin sister is being asked for marriage by his brother Habil. And he says, Hiya ukhti. She's my sister. Wulidat ma'i. She was born with me. And here's the point. Wahiya ahsanu min ukhtika. And she's more beautiful than your sister. Fa'ana ahaqu an atazawwaja biha. And for that reason, I am more rightly deserving to marry her. So Qabil, because of the beauty of his own twin sister, he wanted to marry her. And he did not want his brother Habil to marry her. So, now begins a little love story amongst the family of Adam alayhi salam between his sons and his daughters. What was the solution to this problem? Here we find this is a very realistic situation where there is going to be an arranged marriage, but feelings and desires and lust, they come in the, in the way of that. And they create strife and difficulty amongst the family, pressure, so Adam alayhi salam looking for a, a solution to this, he turned to Allah Azza wa Jal. As the best solution is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he told them the plan that they were to marry the sister of the other. And after telling Qabil this, he refused. And he went against the order of his father. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would handle the matter, would be the deciding factor in who would marry who. And Adam alayhi salam instructed his sons, both Qabil and Habil, to come forth with a sacrifice for the sake of Allah azza And through the quality of their sacrifice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would show who was in the right. So, both of these brothers, they took time to get whatever they were going to give for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Habil, who known very well by his father Adam alayhi salam to be very pious and God-fearing and an and obedient and respectful son. He went out to his herd and he got the fattest and most healthy lamb that he could find amongst all of his herd, the prize lamb, and he slaughtered it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Qabil on the other hand, who was also known by his father to be a little stingy, a little worldly, more interested in his own desires. As you can see from the story, that he began to oppose the order of his father, even the order of Allah And now it was time for his sacrifice, so what does he get? He goes to his grain storage, and he picks a, a basket of the worst grain that he could find to give for the sake of Allah So, what ended up happening? that these two sacrifices were placed in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His judgment, and Allah azza wa sent a fire 
down. And it ate the sacrifice of Havil, which was the lamb. And it took it. And upon that, Abil, he saw that his sacrifice was left untouched, and he knew that it was not accepted by Allah. And he became extremely angry at the success of his brother. And he said, He said, I'm going to kill you so that you do not marry my sister. Look at the reaction, seeing his brother succeed, seeing his brother's sacrifice accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while his was not. Through his own action in his own hand, it was not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so he reacted in this manner, that he will kill his own brother. Habil, he responded by saying, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ That Allah Azza wa Jal only accepts from those who have taqwa. He only accepts from those who have piety and awe of Allah Azza wa Jal. The situation, it was not over, but it subsided to some degree and some time went on. Until one night, when Habil, who was the winner of this competition, and ended up with the spouse he desired, was off tending to his herd of animals, and was late coming home. So his father Adam alayhi salam, concerned like any father would be, he sent his other son Qabil to go and look for his brother, to see what it was that was keeping him. If something had happened, if he needed help, was there something that they could do to bring him home? So Qabil, he goes in search for his brother, and he finds him. And the moment that he saw his brother, who they were both alone now, Habil and Qabil were alone by themselves, and he looks at his brother, and he says, تُقُبِّلَ مِنْكَ وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنِّي It was accepted from you, but it was not accepted from me. And then Habil, he responds again by saying, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will accept from those who have taqwa. After some time passed, the, set, the, the matter had been settled, but still in the heart of Qabil was this anger, this feeling of dissatisfaction, that when he saw his brother alone, he brought up the issue again. How was your sacrifice accepted? And mine was not. You were the winner, and I was the loser. The end result was in the favor of Habil. And he says to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only accept from the righteous. Upon hearing this, Qabil became extremely angry. Angrier than he did before. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he reports this particular piece of history and says that anger overcame Qabil to the point that he killed his brother beating him over the head with an iron rod, a deadly blow. It was also reported by Ibn Kathir, as there are different narrations, that he took a large stone and threw it on his head, crushing his skull to the point that he passed away. Another narration says that Qabil, out of his anger, he strangled his brother. And then he bit him like an animal bites its prey. Here, this is a story in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reports in the Qur'an. Allah azawajal talks about this very incident in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Talking about how these two set out to sacrifice something for the sake of Allah azawajal, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepted from Al-Muttaqeen, which was Habil. This was the first murder in the history of mankind. This was the first time someone lost their life at the hand of another. And the problem now, as you could imagine, the first time something happens, you don't know what to do. Qabil just killed his brother, and now he doesn't know how to react because there's a dead body. There's the evidence. The criminal is left to try to hide the evidence. You can't bring the body back home because it will anger and sadden your parents. You can't leave it there outside because someone could find it and the evidence would be left. So Qabil, he begins to pick up the body of his brother. He's still not sorry or regretful 
The only thing he's looking to do is hide the evidence of this murder. And so he picks up the dead body of his brother and puts it on his shoulder, as reported by Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah. He says that Qabil began to carry this body back and forth, around and around, looking for a place to put it. He has no idea what to do. Today, we know that you put the body in the ground. But because there's no precedent, there's no example, Qabil has no idea. All the while the body is decaying and it's beginning to rot. It's beginning to smell. It's beginning to ooze. And through this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was degrading and dishonoring Qabil for what he had done. Until finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as reported in the Quran, Surah Al-Ma'idah, He sent a crow, two birds, both of them flying over Qabil as he's carrying the body of his brother. One of the birds begins to attack the other one in mid-flight to the point that the second bird was killed and plummeted to the earth. So now Qabil is watching this scene between these two birds and finds that the one that killed the other one flew down to the ground and began to dig into the earth, creating a hole and then pushed the dead bird into it and covered it. And then at this point, Qabil, he became regretful, realizing that what he did was wrong and that he had no idea what to do with the body until Allah Azza wa Jal saved him from the situation and showed him a way to bury the body of his dead brother. It's not odd that there was a murder. It's not something odd that this took place, this type of crime, because human beings, there are there is wrong and there is right, there is good and there is evil. And it's just a matter of time before something like this happens in our history. So why not happen during that time? It's not strange that this was the first murder that happened. The profound thing about this story is not when it happened or what happened. The profound thing is why did this crime happen? Why was it that one brother was so angry to the point that he was going to kill his own flesh and blood. Was it over love? Some people say that it was over the love of a woman. It wouldn't be the last crime that took place in the history of mankind. It wouldn't be the last thing that happened because of love. But it's something much more deeply rooted than that. Some of the Salaf, the, our ancestors, they say, Al-Hasadu Awwalu dhanbin usi Allahu bihi fis sama That envy and jealousy it is the first sin in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was disobeyed with in the heavens Ya'ni Hasadu Iblis li Adam Referring to the envy that Iblis the shaytan had for Adam alayhi salam Wa awwalu dhanbin usi Allahu bihi fil ard and it was also the first sin that was disobeyed, that was disobeyed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth. يعني حسد ابن آدم لأخيه حتى قتله. It was the jealousy of Adam's son for his brother until he killed him. Jealousy and envy, a disease found in the heart that drives people to do things which they will regret for their entire life. The brother of Habil, the murderer, Qabil, he was amongst the losers. And this is what Habil told him when he was going to kill him. He said, you will kill me and I will not do anything to stop you so that your sin and my sin, it will be on you alone and you will be amongst al-khasirin, the losers, yawm al-qiyamah. This one quality, this sickness in the heart, it will lead people to their destruction. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin min kulli dham fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi kama yuhibbu rabbuna wa yardah wa nusalli wa nusalli ma'ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen wa ba'd. Brothers and sisters, jealousy and envy. This quality or I should say this disease, it is 
disliking or disdaining a blessing that has been given to someone else. To see something good that Allah has given to someone else. That you begin to despise this blessing and hope and desire and seek and strive to have it removed from them. Even if you yourself will not obtain it. That you begin to see something good that Allah has blessed with someone else. And you begin to despise that thing. And you begin to despise that person. Hoping that you can rid them of that good blessing. Because if I can't have it, no one else should have it. This is as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says. This is the blame worthy type of jealousy and envy. Hasad. This is a hatred that people have and that develops in their heart and it begins to create pain in their being. They begin to grieve over this sickness and the only thing that they feel will be their cure is to remove that blessing, to remove that object of envy so that their pain is relieved and their soul is again at ease. When you look at the story of Qabil and Habil, did you think that after the death of his brother, after murdering his brother, he would go back and marry his wife? He's the murderer of the husband. He will never be able to marry the woman that he wanted. After doing that, it wasn't about love. It wasn't about lust. It was about jealousy. All he wanted to do was to feel justified and to feel relieved in those feelings. And the only way he felt he could do that was to remove the, situ- the equation altogether. This is something that begins in our heart. And as you can see, it developed that way for Qabil, that the envy for his brother developed to the point that it permeated in his limbs and his actions. As the Prophet wasallam he said, Inna fil jasadi mudratun that in the body there is a morsel of flesh that if it is pure and it is righteous then the body will be pure and righteous and if it is evil and corrupt then the body will be evil and corrupt and it is nothing other than the heart the feelings of jealousy and envy they begin inside and if you cannot control them and contain them and cure them, they will work their way out into your actions and you will destroy yourself with this envy. So, inshallah ta'ala, next week we will talk more about al-hasad and the cures for this disease. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect each and every one of us and our families from these types of diseases of the heart and to cure us with his beautiful words and following of the Quran and the Sunnah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid wa akhiru da'wana nalhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqnis salah.